Hey guys, how's it going? I am back. I feel like I was just with you guys a few minutes ago. And here we go. More information just got released in yet another case. Busy day. Um, I don't think that I'm going to be able to stay on here too, too long, but I am going to read with you exactly what went down today. But Josh Duggar is getting released. There are very strict restrictions in place for his release. And I'm going to go through the itemized list of those. But let me kind of break down for you right now what took place today. So as we know, he was arrested as he was accused of possession of several graphic images and things on his hard drive that stemmed from a 2019 search warrant. Well, way more gruesome details came out today regarding those charges. And I'm going to give you guys information regarding what his restrictions are as he is going to be released tomorrow. Um, and I have to give a quick shout out. I know I always say all of the sleuths and all of that stuff happens in discord. It does because literally when I stopped my live stream on the Barry Morphew case just 10 minutes ago in Discord, one of my girls, Grayson, started sending me all of this stuff that she dug up deep. And she dug it up from a law student who was actually in the Zoom hearing today. So today, Josh, who's 33 years old, appeared via Zoom from Washington County Jail in Arkansas for the detention court hearing that was going to discuss his bond and possible um, ability to be released. And a, Josh, a judge said that Josh will be released from prison tomorrow with conditions including restricted travel as he cannot leave Benton, Washington and Madison counties in Arkansas without permission from the court. Josh has unlimited access to his six children with wife Anna present, though he is not allowed to be around minor children, including his siblings, nieces, and nephews. The judge said of her decision this, the court views these charges as very serious. It is a concern to have an agent testify that the file download found on a computer is some of the worst child abuse pornography in a thousand cases. That concerns the court, obviously. The victims of your crime, if you committed it, concern the court. Child Children are involuntary victims of pornography. They're subject to human trafficking. This weighs against your release into the community. She said that the scandal that was made public also concerns her because of the age of the victims and the children in these photographs and videos that were discovered on his tech. The judge added, I am concerned images and ages are very close to the ages of your own children and nephews and nieces and siblings' children. I don't know if you're a danger. Hello, he obviously is a danger, am I right? Special Agent Faulkner from Homeland Security was the first to take the stand at the hearing as he was questioned by the prosecutor. He said, in May of 2019, an Arkansas police officer identified a computer participating in the known sharing of photos and videos of children pornography. He claimed Josh had one two-minute video on his computer of two underage females with a male who performed essay acts on the kids a two-minute video on his computer of two underage females. Also found were 65 images of female consistent with child pornography. The agent said October 2019, the IP address was assigned to Josh Duggar with an address in Springsdale, in Springdale Arkansas. A HP desktop computer from the car lot, a MacBook laptop in an RV, Josh arrived in and Josh's cell phone were confiscated by authorities. Though Josh was not informed of the reason for the investigation, he did ask authorities if someone downloaded child pornography on his computer. Duh, because you know it was found. Josh admitted he had a TOR browser on his computer, which gives him access to the dark web anonymously. Why would you need access to the dark web anonymously if you're not doing anything shady, Josh? The agent explained how the child pornography could be found on the dark web. The agent then said how he asked Josh about the images of five of minors five to 10 years old. He responded, I'd rather not answer that question. 
The password of one of the programs used to obtain the images was the last four digits of Mr. Duggar's birth year. The same password was also used for Josh's bank accounts, websites, and more, which shows that it couldn't have been somebody hacking in or on the dark web. He's using the same password for all of his other personal accounts. Josh used one of the programs to view corn, including R-A-P-E and child corn. The agent mentioned how downloads from a specific file were made. The agent said the file is in the top five worst that I have ever had to examine. As the specific file had been known to include children as young as 18 months old. Let that sink in. Specific file had included children as young as 18 months old. The agent did not say Josh downloaded the photos involving an 18 month old. Okay. The agent said friends and family confirmed that Josh has a corn addiction. Addiction is one thing. Okay. It, it doesn't need to be minors. Okay. The agent said that there is no evidence that Josh was the person who downloaded the TOR, although he did remember, admit that he did have that, that software. The agent confirmed Josh and Anna drove themselves to the sheriff's office with agents following them so their children would not see him get arrested. Parole officer Wynn then took the stand as she mentioned the third party Josh may live with if he is released. Mr. and Mrs. Reber, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who have been friends of Bob, of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar for five to six years have agreed to allow Josh to live with them. Mr. Reber offers ministry to prisoners while his wife is a piano teacher. Give me a break. The parole officer said Mrs. Reber has reservations of Josh living with her family. Hello, of course. Tim explained her concern was she was a woman and Josh was a man and that she felt she didn't know how she felt about being alone with him for a long period of time. The officer then explained how minors come in and out of the home for piano lessons, but that they are always supervised by an adult. The family also owns firearms, which is cause for concern for the judge. Josh would stay in an add-on bedroom in the home and the internet is password protected. The parole officer said that based on his job and that he's a pastor, volunteers, they could be sustainable to third party custodians. They could be suitable, I'm sorry, third party custodians. However, the minors coming in and out of the home for the piano lessons and the pistols caused the probation offices, offices some concern. So she requested that he not be released. When Josh's lawyer spoke, he said that they would provide a suitable residence. Mrs. Reber, again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, agreed to remove the firearms from the home and not have the lessons there as well. The prosecutor then gave her closing argument and as she said, some of those images and videos contained minors under the age of 12 and as young as a toddler. The child pornography was found in the office of Josh Duggar's business. A partition was downloaded another hiding way to obtain the child pornography. The lengths he went to to conceal his activity. He was doing it at his business by a partition that is supposed to alert his wife, Anna Duggar, if he is looking at things he is not supposed to be looking at. He's looking at the dark web. The special agent said he's been doing these cases for years and it's the worst that he's ever seen. Those are the types of images and videos Josh Duggar was looking at, is what he is quoted to have said. The password was a password he used for years on his personal accounts. He's the person behind downloading the child pornography. He admitted he was familiar with programming and did also reference that TOR browser. We know the child pornography involves the essay of toddlers and young children. He has a history dating back 20 years that shows his sexual attraction to children and the deviousness of his activity. Josh's lawyer said in his closing argument, Josh Duggar is not a risk of flight. This case has been investigated for two years since May 2019. Homeland Security executed a search warrant in November 2019 Mr. Duggar has not fled or left the jurisdiction since. He voluntarily surrendered. When a defendant voluntarily surrenders, that's a clear indication he is committed to these charges head on. 
not necessarily. It's because he didn't want to see his kids to see him get arrested. And that's why he voluntarily surrendered and drove to the police station with Anna, which he already stated. The court could impose restrictions. This is not a defendant who is going to flee. He is not a danger to the community. Uh, bullshit. They could have arrested him at any point in the last two years. Ahead of the hearing, Josh filed court papers requesting to be released on bail. In the court papers obtained by The Sun, Josh's attorney argued he has no criminal convictions and has known about the federal investigation since November 2019. Since then, Josh and his wife Anna and their six children have continued to reside in the Western District of Arkansas, and he has allegedly maintained an open dialogue with the U.S. Attorney's Office in connection with this investigation. They also argued that Josh voluntarily self-surrendered and is neither a risk of flight nor a danger to the community. Again, I call BS. An attorney for Josh then questioned the witness as he had him confirmed they traced the images to the IP address and not a specific device. The court papers read, indeed, while child pornography crimes are unquestionably serious, the Indictment certainly does not allege that Josh personally interacted with a single child and the government would be hard pressed to identify how conditions of release set by this court would not protect the community from criminal conduct. The request also notes his time on family's reality show of 19 kids and counting on TLC. The court papers read, Duggar has a widely recognizable face and has spent the majority of his life in the public spotlight, making any concern that he is a risk of flight all the more unwarranted. As he has demonstrated for the 17 months during which he has been aware of this investigation, that there is no danger of Josh fleeing. Josh's legal team also said that he found a third party custodian for him to live with and that there again will be no minor children living there or coming in and out of the residence for those piano lessons. The court papers read, Josh is requesting that this court permit him to return home to his immediate family during the pending of this case. The residents of his home are his wife who is pregnant and their six children. It's disgusting. Then this article talks a little bit about the Homeland Security investigation that started back in 2019, which we talked a lot about yesterday. For the second count, it's that Josh knowingly possessed material that contained images of child pornography, pornography including images of minor, minors under the age of 12, all the way down to 18 months old. According to the Department of jo Justice, Josh allegedly used the internet to download child essay material and possess this material, and again, some that depicts the, the age of minors. He pled not guilty to his charges, which we know about, and we know that he faces 20 years in prison for each count and fines up to $250,000 for each count. So if released, the judge says at this hearing today that he would reside with that third party. And... It's looking like tomorrow is the release date. I'm just double checking where it's confirmed in that. And we already went over the family statements. And then here I'm going to go over some of the specifics regarding this release. And let me pull this up here so I can share this with you. Sorry, I haven't even literally been looking at the chat because I've been wanting to read that directly with you. So let's start here. Josh Duggar will be released on very strict conditions. He cannot be return. He, he cannot return to his guest house or his main home. Court is not interested in second chances. Don't. This is all paraphrased, by the way, for the person who, from the person who was sitting in on the Zoom call. Tomorrow, Josh will be released to the Reavers with close GPS monitoring, restricted to this residence except for working, education, church, medical services, meeting with lawyers, court ordered obligation or other activities approved in advance by the probation office. He may not possess or view any pornography or erotica of any kind. Court does not think it has the technology to limit Josh's use. Josh cannot have computers, phones, smart TVs, gaming systems, etc. He may not ask for the passwords from the Reavers or her daughter. Josh can get a jitterbug phone <laughs> jitterbug, to contact counsel as long as it's approved by a probation officer. Josh cannot leave the Western District of Arkansas. Josh can have unlimited contact with his children as long as their mother is present. Josh cannot have contact with any other minor children, including siblings, family members, the piano students, etc. Now, this gives me pause because 
whether Anna is present or not, why is he allowed contact with his children if we still do not know what role and to what capacity of a role Anna may or may not have played within this? Was she aware of what was going on and turned a blind eye? It, why, I don't believe that he should be allowed at this point to have any contact with his children. And that is just my personal opinion. But let me know what you think in the chat. Not a requirement, but a recommendation is to plan activities based on who he might run into, avoid birthday parties, etc. No substances, drugs, or alcohol. Cannot act actually or constructively possess a firearm, which is why the firearms are being removed from that third party's home. Must surrender passport and not obtain a new one. Except for, oh, sorry, let me go back down here. May not violate any state or local law, must provide a DNA sample, must appear in court as requested, must sign an appearance bond. So obviously a lot of stipulations within the conditions for his release. I don't understand personally why they are even allowing his release with these charges and what they found. They found images and videos of children as young as 18 months to 12 years old. 65 images. This guy has got a problem. A two minute video of two females under the age of 12 with another man. This guy has got a problem. He says that he has an addiction to pornography, but only to minors. This guy has got a problem. Why is he being first and foremost, released on bail, whether it's into a third party household or not. But moreover, why is he allowed unlimited access, unlimited access to his six children, to his pregnant wife with no supervision? Because again, we don't know, if any, what role Anna may or may not have played in this. And even if she didn't play a direct role, but knew what was going on or now knows what's going on, hopefully she has the smarts to not even allow him around the children. But how could the court, it, it's frustrating that the court could come to this decision without knowing 100% with confidence what she may or may not have known and allowed. Because we know that that dynamic in that entire big family is just a little skewed. The religion is a little, you know, different. Not, I don't want to say wrong, but different. It, it, the whole thing is infuriating. Um, and again, I want to give a shout out to Grayson here for finding all of this information because it is not readily available out there. She dug and dug and dug and dug and really got um, into the depths of this. And I'll post it for all of you guys who are in here now and in Discord. We'll, I'll post what I just read off in Discord and the article that I read from in Discord as well. Um, and I guess I'll also put it in the, I can't put the photos, but I put the link to the article in the description box below once we're done here. So the fact that he has children who are the same age and within the same age range as these alleged victims and of what they found on his computer, how are you allowing him to go back around them with unlimited access? He also admitted that he uses the dark web anonymously. Why are you? Why would you need access to the dark web if you're not doing anything shady? I mean, between what already took place back in 2015 and even further back and all of the allegations with his sisters and the other girls who came forward and where he admitted that he had done inappropriate activity with them all the way into what you have now, like, how is that not enough? It's so frustrating. And that's why he keeps getting away with it because he keeps getting off. He keeps getting a slap on the wrist. Oh, well, I'm going to repent. I'm going to stay with this pastor. I, I, I went to counseling. I'm talking to my family. No, 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 no. You are a repeat offender and you keep getting away with it, which is what's giving you the courage to keep doing it and think you're getting away with it more and more. And Here's what, it's because you are, because you're not fully being held accountable. And I'm sorry that I'm pissed off right now. It's been a big day for true crime for those of you who are on my last stream with me a few minutes ago. And it's just, it's, it's unnerving that this is where we are. It is absolutely unnerving. Um, as I mentioned, I'm so sorry I can't stay on here longer to open up panel and to, to discuss with you guys because I have to go pick up my two-year-old child who the thought of like, hi, you're even going after people younger than my two-year-old child, it just is infuriating. Um, sorry, guys, sorry. Um, anyways, I'll keep you updated as we learn more. We'll talk about it in Discord, guys, um, since I won't be able to jump back on here tonight. And if you are just now tuning in, rewind it. I read the full article and I also showed screenshots of what those restrictions are going to be for his release 
let's just pray that Anna has enough smarts and motherly instincts to not let this dirtbag around her children, whether she's there or not, because I mean, come on, he is a predator. Say it with me, a predator, allegedly. All right, guys, if you haven't yet, you know the drill, subscribe so that you get notified next time I pop live on here, because I know I do it a lot unannounced. So make sure you're subscribed so that you get notified. And I will share updates with you soon, as soon as I get them. Thanks for spending so much time with me over the course of the last two days on here. I'll keep you guys updated and I'll talk with you guys soon. All right, stay safe, guys. Bye.